stars at night are big and bright Deep in the heart of Texas The prairie sky is wide and high Deep in the heart of Texas The sage in bloom is like perfume Deep in the heart of Texas Reminds me of the one I love Deep in the heart of Texas Today, uh, Dr. Jim Riddlesberger has been in the political science department at TCU since 1982. Uh, he has taught lots of different political science courses, but he focuses mainly on uh, the Texas history and, and on the presidency. Uh, I'm sure he will tell you more about some of his classroom experiences and all. I do want to mention he was the uh, TCU Honors Professor of the Year in 2012. Uh, he served as chair of the department and um, most recently was the interim director for the Center for Texas Studies uh, when our director was um, uh, out of town for a year. So uh, Jim is going to share with you some memorable Texas elections as we head into Tuesday. Jim? Are you tired of politics yet? <laughs> I, I, I am. Uh, I, I, uh, when Leanna and I talked about doing this program, um, I thought, well, sure, that'll be fun, and then I realized, uh, as I was thinking about it this week, which is the first time I thought about it systematically, how big a topic this is. Uh, it's absolutely huge. Of course, Texas is full of all kinds of things, um, uh, and uh, when you start getting down into the nitty-gritty, there have been a lot of really fun elections by a lot of larger-than-life personalities, um, and that's been true really uh, since the very beginning uh, of our state's history. Um, I thought what I'd try to do today, uh, since by the way, I, I, I love genealogy. Gene genealogy is, my father was our family genealogist, but it scares me a little bit, the DNA. I already want to deny some of my relatives, and my gosh, I can't even imagine what would happen if people could prove they were my relatives. So anyway, I, I'll be interested in your thoughts on that too, Renee. <laughs> okay, uh, so I thought we would t uh, start uh, with kind of a, a parameter. I, I, I said that I, I was going to look at about 10 elections. Uh, I thought we could probably ha have a nice discussion about 10 different elections uh, in Texas history. Uh, and so I kind of started um, it, it, with recent times and went back from there and got back as far as 1941. Uh, so uh, we're going to talk about a number of, 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 pre uh, of elections that have taken place in Texas. I hope that you can have some fun with this. I hope that we can uh, learn some things from this. And I hope I can even give you a little bit of, a, of political context because I'm a political scientist. So I just want to look at these things uh, systematically. I want to see what's going on uh, in, in, uh, in Texas uh, politics. Uh, and so, um, gosh, it's, work, it's working. Um, if you recall, just to say a frame to this thing, uh, up until recent times, Texas has been a one-party democratic state. In fact, I grew up in Denton, just north of here, and uh, when I was a kid, we had a, had a sign on the square at whatever storefront was open during the election season um, would be given to the Democratic Party for its Democratic headquarters. And all the Democratic candidates would have their bumper stickers and buttons and yard signs out in the same place uh, and, and everybody running for justice of the peace all the way up to President of the United States. Um, and the sign in front of the Democratic headquarters in Denton said, make it emphatic, vote straight Democratic. And of course, uh, that was a safe thing to do, and, and, and businessmen always, um, always donated that storefront space to the, to the Democrats because everybody was Democrats. Uh, there were a few weirdos that called themselves Republicans. Uh, for those of you who uh, know Texas history, you know that there were people down in the hill country who I should think of fondly because they were of German heritage that were Republicans. Um, uh, they had been uh, anti-slavery as far back as the Civil War uh, and had affiliated with the Republican Party uh, in, the, in the era after that. But they were always a minority. They were always a very small minority, even a faction. Uh, so up until um, uh, recent times, up until the 1960s, if there were Democrat, if there were Republicans in the Texas legislature, and there always were two or three of them, uh, they would be from the Hill Country, or they might be from a very wealthy area of Houston or Dallas. But that was about it. Uh, there just were no Republicans holding office 
in Texas. Um, I study uh, uh, the, the Texas congressional history, and I'm not going to spend a lot of time with Texas congressional history today. That could be a topic for another day. But, um, uh, but, but you know, during that time, that, that, that time, uh, one of the, the the first real Republican. There was a Republican from Amarillo that was elected back in the 1940s, but the first real Republican elected in Texas was Bruce Alger from Dallas, Texas. Um, and the Democrats didn't know what to do with him in Congress. They had absolutely no idea. He immediately got crosswise with Sam Rayburn, uh, and Rayburn said that until you beat that guy, and I won't say what he actually said, but until you beat that guy, you're never going to get a federal courthouse in Dallas. Why did we get the Fritz Lanham building in Fort Worth before they got the Earl Cabell building in Dallas? The answer is because we had Jim Wright and they had Bruce Alger and Sam Rayburn hated Bruce Alger. Uh, we didn't have a better claim for a, a, a new building. As a matter of fact, ours was probably not as good as Dallas's. Why is it named after Earl Cabell? Well the answer is he beat Bruce Alger <laughs> and that was enough. Uh, so, uh, so you know, it's a, it's kind of an interesting, uh, kind of an interesting story. But that's just kind of a background to Texas politics because that's the way it was. Uh, we were a democratic state, and so nearly all of the elections, at least up until uh, the 1960 election, the special election where we elect John Tower uh, to the U.S. Senate, all of these elections are primary elections. They're elections between two Democrats because the fall election simply didn't matter. Uh, and it appears uh, that that trend still continues today, but the shoe's on the other foot, right? And we'll talk about that a little bit uh, as we move, move forward. This is one of my favorite Texas stories. In 1941, uh, our senior senator from Texas named Morris Shepard died. Uh, Shepard was a very popular man in, in, in Washington. He was a, a very effective senator. Uh, for those of you who don't remember Morris Shepard, he's the father of prohibition. Uh, he was a teetotaling Methodist from Central Texas. Um, I'm a Methodist and I'm not sure I've met a teetotaling Methodist since then, but he was, okay? And, and, and Morris Shepard, uh, Morris Shepard uh, had made that his, his, his mantra, that had been his, his cause. But he was also a very thoughtful person and even those who opposed him on uh, the issue of prohibition liked him personally. There's one great story about Morris Shepard uh, in, a, in a restaurant in Washington, D.C., uh, and one of the Jewish members of uh, Congress uh, sent him a drink uh, for his, uh, a complimentary drink with, for his meal, um, and of course, um, since uh, Shepard didn't drink, he got laughed hard and apparently sent the member from New York, the Jewish member from New York, a ham sandwich uh, in return. So there was always this kind of inter play uh, in Texas politics. Uh, when Shepard died, as a matter of fact, he was very close to his colleague in the U.S. Senate, Tom Connolly. How close? When Shepard died, Connolly married uh, uh, Shepard's uh, widow. Um, and so uh, she was married to two U.S. Senators for a long period of time. Uh, fun stories about Texas politics. But Shepard's death created an opening, and it was the first opening in the U.S. Senate in a long time. And so there were a long line of people who really wanted to be uh, in, the, uh, uh, in the U.S. Senate. And since Shepard had died, this was their opportunity. And of course, this falls under uh, the old Texas special election problem, right? And we know Texas has a very strange special election law. We'll see it here and we'll see it again in 1961 when we talk about John Tower, where uh, you have a, 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 an election for that one seat, in this case the U.S. Senate seat, and anyone who wants to run can declare as a candidate, and then we have a, an election where all the candidates are voted upon, uh, and the top two vote-getters, assuming no one gets a majority, the top two vote-getters are in a runoff. Okay? Um, it is done without regard to political party, and turnout is always quite low in these elections because it's the only election, right? Uh, it's not uh, the long election, and it's not held on regular election day. It's held on a date that is uh, created by uh, the Texas legislature. 